Okay, so we are now recording and just to welcome everyone here today, I mentioned for those of you who have just joined today is really going to focus around the, I suppose, the immigration piece of arrival at the airport. We'll talk a little bit around transportation as well, um, but it is mainly focused on uh, the non-EU side of, of things and a little bit about the appointment booking system and things like that. For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Colm Cronin. Um, I'm at DCU three years now. I've worked in the sector for more than 15 years. And once upon a time, I worked in the immigration service division. So uh, I have worked in the area of immigration for even longer than 15 years. And uh, I, that's why I suppose um, I will talk it in relation to, to that. I suppose some, some of the questions that people might be popping in, I will look to address as we go through it. And then if there are still questions um, at the end, I can cover them off. And that is uh, my dog there. But the, the big thing, I suppose, is around, you know, the, you know, what to, to plan. So planning before you arrive. And this piece is really key for anyone who doesn't have an EU or EEA passport. Obviously, also, if you hold a UK passport, you're not going to go through the, the immigration process. So if there are people out there um, who hold an EU passport and you're wondering, should you enter Ireland on that passport? Absolutely. There might be some people who hold dual passports, maybe an Australian passport and an Irish passport, then you should enter Ireland on your Irish or your EU passport. Maybe you hold a Brazilian and an Italian passport, then enter Ireland on your Italian passport. If you don't enter on your um, your EU or your Irish passport, then there, there, there's a process because you're in the system registered as a non-EU national and any non-EU national uh, who is remaining in Ireland for not, uh, longer than 90 days is going to have to register with the authorities. So one thing that can be a little bit different in Ireland um, for from perhaps other um, locations is that you go through immigration, you meet with an immigration officer before you um, get your, your bags. So it's really important that you bring your documentation on the plane with you, that you bring it in your hand luggage, because you're not going to be able to retrieve that before you go through uh, the immigration process. And I know that can be different from other locations. So just bear that one in mind that you will get off the, the plane and then you will see that there will be um, this immigration desks that you can see in the top right picture. And essentially that, is, you know, there's an EU line and a non-EU line. For those of you who don't have the EU passports, again, you go to the non-EU line, you'll meet with an immigration officer and they... The, the experience can vary for people, okay? So if you know people who traveled here before and they said, oh, I wasn't asked for anything, is that possible? Yeah, sure it is, but um, your experience could be different. Everything is at the discretion of an immigration officer. And I suppose it's, it's really important to bear that in mind. So you can have the documents with you. You might not be asked for everything, but you need to have them in, in case you are. A lot of this is it's common sense. OK, so you need to try to put yourself in the shoes of an immigration officer and, and think a little bit how they think. You know, the things that they're going to be looking for are like you are who you say you are. And that's going to be your passport that identifies you. What are you doing in, in Ireland? You're coming to, to DCU and that's going to be your your offer letter. Some of you will already have been potentially granted a, a visa if you're a visa required national. No matter who, you know, whether you're visa required or non visa required, you're going to go to, to meet with the immigration officer. So they're going to want to know what you're doing in Ireland. You're coming to study in, in DCU, so they may have some questions around that. So that's why you have the documentation around that. Sometimes they want to, to know, do you have enough money to support yourself? OK, and particularly in relation to non-visa required students, you haven't been asked to prove that previously. So um, evidence of financial aid, 
bank accounts, things like that. Doesn't mean you have to print out an absolutely official one, but that if you are, say, in receipt of financial aid, if you're in receipt of scholarships, you have those award letters and things like that, that you have proof of your private medical insurance. That's going to be really important uh, that, you, that you have that and that you're able to, to show that. Um, and then the, you may well be asked in relation to your accommodation. OK, so they may want to know not that you have to have accommodation set up for the entirety of the semester, but the immigration officer at the desk may may ask where are you staying tonight or where are you staying for the first week. So make sure you have those details to hand that you're able to demonstrate that you're able to show it to the immigration officer that you meet at the desk. For 99% of people, it's they, they, they fly through, there, there are no issues whatsoever. Some, sometimes, you know, if you forget a document, it can take a little bit of time, you have to pull it up on your phone and things like that. The other point um, to bear in mind is there should be free Wi-Fi in the, um, the, the airport, but you can't rely on it, so it's better to have it printed, printed off. Um, everybody requires... Um, medical insurance okay that's going to be important no matter uh, if you don't have an eu passport you have to have medical insurance so um after you uh meet with the immigration officer and as long as they are satisfied by uh your your answers and um, they will put a stamp on your passport that looks a little bit like what you can see in the bottom right hand corner except you can see there that says business yours will say study and for the vast majority of people, you will get a 90 day landing stamp. OK, so I suppose a lot of people worry, hey, I, I only got a visa um, for three months or six months. That is an entry visa. Your landing stamp supersedes that. OK, so it's important to, to bear that one in, in mind that your landing stamp um, supersedes the, uh, the, the visa that you were given, and it means that you have 90 days in which to register with the immigration authorities. Some people might get less than 90 days, depending on the immigration officer you meet. It would be a very small number of people. If that is the case, don't panic, okay? Um, you'll, you'll still get time to register, but sometimes you might meet an immigration officer who's inexperienced, um, and they only give you maybe 30 days or 60 days. But for the vast, vast majority of people, you should be given the 90 days in which to register. So um, that is essentially how that, that process works. You meet with them. They want to know who you are, what you're doing in Ireland. Do you have the money to support yourself? Do you have medical insurance? And then they put a stamp on your passport. And that is the, the landing stamp. So it's pretty straightforward in terms of the, um, I suppose, the th that process. OK, I, I think that one is, is really um, straightforward. Uh, again, so, some of this, as I said, I, I will come to some of the questions that uh, people have towards the end because I'm going to cover them anyway. So that is the process in terms of the immigration at the airport. And then there is Immigration Service Delivery, formerly INAS, formerly GNIB. And you can see there, if you don't have an EU, EEA or UK passport, you must register with ISD. OK, ISD are under the auspices of the Department of Justice. Um, and anyone who lives in Dublin has to register with them at the Burr Key office for the for anyone outside of Dublin, you need to go to your, your local office. But I imagine for probably 99.9% of, of people, um, they can um, they, they will be living in Dublin, so they will register at the Burkey office. How do you register at the, the Burkey office? Well, um, the process has changed. You once, once upon a time, pre-2016, people had to just go and line up or queue up, as we would say, outside the office. Then they introduced an online booking system. There were issues with the online booking system. Um, there were bots that were blocked booking apartments. So then they introduced the, a free phone number. 
So the number is it's a free phone number if you call from an Irish um, e cell phone, mobile phone, whatever you want to call it. And um, you, it's a free phone number. So that's why I, I recommend, you know, waiting until you get here to, to call the number. Um, you can see details on screen. It's open nine to five um, and it is free. Uh, so you call that and they will make the appointment to let you know when you need to go um, to the Berkey office. Um, so uh, the you you have to go, uh, as I said, to the Berkey office if you are living in Dublin. Um, and again, I can make this uh, PowerPoint presentation available to people. The um, I suppose ISD updated their website last year, and it's actually pretty good in fairness. It does a good job of outlining the step-by-step -step process um, and answering a lot of questions. So you will find a lot of information on there, certainly. So that is the, the in around immigration, I think sometimes it can seem very intimidating. It can seem really complicated. It's not all that complicated. They are just trying to ascertain the why people are, are who they are, why they're coming into the country. And then you make your appointment to register at the, the Bird Key office. There will be more information, okay, about the registration process given at orientation. I'm just trying to give you a flavor now, but there's no point in overloading you with a whole load of information before you arrive. Again, it's a free phone number when you come to Ireland. So you're not really going to be looking to book an appointment until you come to, to Ireland. So there will be a whole session um, around the immigration registration and everything that you will need to bring to the Berkey office when you arrive in, in Ireland at, at the orientation. But there is no point in going through all of that now. You have enough to, to be dealing with without going through that. And again, we'll come back to take questions uh, at the end around the immigration process. So just a couple of points to, to note on that. Again, around the times, uh, you can see there that nine to five, Monday to Friday, when you can call to, to make the appointment. And again, you, you'll have at least 90 days, you know, after you get to Ireland to make an appointment. So there'll be plenty of time for you to get an appointment. Be conscious that, you know, um, you, the appointment you get might clash with uh, a lecture and that's okay unless it's a really important lab or an exam I would encourage you to just let your lecturer know beforehand that you need to go to the immigration office and you know they will understand around that it's, a, it's one time that you'll have to go after that renewals are done online the movement to the stamp 1g is done online so you're only going to have to go in person to the Berkey office once so that's why I think unless you are missing you know going to miss something really really critical take the appointment that you're given however sometimes unexpected things come up if you find that you have an appointment and you realize you're not going to be able to make that appointment it's important that you then call to cancel the appointment because otherwise the next time you go to try to make an appointment or you go to the Berkey office it'll be on record that you no showed and then they're going to want to know why you no showed for the appointment so that is going to be really important so just a few things um to to go uh there um so that is and i'll come back to to take questions ar around that again as highlighted you know if you don't have an eu eea or uk passport you must register um it's uh so if you if you have an eu passport it's uh you know one of the beauties of the eu and maybe the eu don't go do enough of a good job of selling it um but we have free travel within the the eu so um i could to go to Germany or France or Italy tomorrow to, to work. Um, unfortunately, so if you don't have uh, one of those, those are the people who, who have to, to register. So that's the immigration and we will come back and dedicate plenty of time to take questions and discussions in a little bit. But I also want to talk about like for um, everyone in terms of transportation from the airport. There, there isn't going to be a specific um, meet and greet service at the airport. There will be a meet and greet service on campus and uh, you will get more details about that. Uh, you may already have received the orientation email. I know it is scheduled. It was scheduled to go out this week. Maybe it's already gone out. I don't know. It's student support and development who are looking after that side of things. But 
Um, the, I suppose, as I mentioned earlier, the good thing about Dublin Airport is that there is um, free, uh, there is free Wi-Fi in the um, in the airport, so you will be able to uh, get on to to check. Google Maps is going to be very useful to you, um, but there are, I suppose, uh, two main uh, options available to to people uh, in terms of when you get off um, the 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 plane, you go through immigration, you've gotten your stamp, and now you need to leave the airport. So uh, the, the main option that um, are going, the main two options are either going to be getting the bus, um, and I suppose there are buses that go from the airport directly to the DCU campus if somebody is uh, staying on the on, on campus, you can get a bus directly. Um, there are also a number of buses that go into town. Uh, again, the the, air, the airport website is uh, offers a pretty good um, kind of in uh, has a lot of information around which bus routes are available to you. Google Maps is really good, um, but and the the buses um, I suppose are a, a relatively cost effective way of of doing it. But what I would say is um, the buses do require you to have coins for some of them. OK, so um, or a leap card and you're not going to be able to get a leap card um, uh, for a little while. So what I would say is that it is um, just bear that in mind that if you have uh, euro euros when you arrive, maybe go into the shop, get some change. There are lots of shops in the airport. You need coins. You need exact change um, for Dublin bus in order to, to use that. There are ticket machines as well. The ticket machines will accept credit card. Uh, so you can keep an eye out for that. There is also lots of people in the airport, lots of kind of um, greeters, they're not going to be the university greeters, but there are lots of people you'll see um, in kind of yellow high-vis vests who are able to um, guide you towards the different buses that exist uh, and um, also um, to the taxi transportation, because that is probably the other way that a lot of people travel, because sometimes you arrive very early, you don't want to wait for a, a bus, or you've got a lot of luggage and, and, and you want to um, get a cab. So there are taxi ranks located outside of both Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Um, in Ireland, uh, it all runs on a meter. So the taxi driver has to turn on the meter. They have to give you a receipt at the, the end of um, your journey. So you can make sure that that is the, the case. Um, and uh, just to, again, there, I suppose there's a lot of information there uh, around, you know, on the, the airport website. Taxis are going to be more expensive, certainly, than, than uh, getting the bus, but um, there are, you know, uh, a lot of, um, it can be, I suppose, uh, if you're tired, if you've been traveling for a long time um, and you want to spend the money, uh, a taxi can uh, get you directly to your uh, accommodation. Um, maybe for some of you, you will be staying in Airbnbs or you won't be stay, um, staying um, on, uh, on campus. The, the other thing, I suppose, is there are, there are some, um, taxi apps um, but at the airport um, there you won't you won't be able to use those okay so taxis have to register to use at the the airport and there's a um, a queuing system or a lineup system so you have to use the taxi ranks at the at the airport so uh, remember remember that um, and uh, again online you'll see a lot of information about that so um, you're not going to be able to organize like an uber from from the airport it doesn't work in that way in ireland um it, not at the not at the airport anyway certainly there are taxi apps if you know you're going from your accommodation into town or something like that but the airport is kind of highly regulated so just bear that one in mind it, it is it's pretty straightforward um, and especially with DCU kind of being located relatively close to to the airport um, I would say from DCU to the airport is probably 20 minutes by 
by bus, probably 10 minutes by, by taxi. Um, so DCU is very, very close uh, to the airport. When I'm going to the airport, I live close to the university. I get the, the number 16 um, and it gets me out to the airport in 15 to, to 20 minutes, certainly. So that's a lot of stuff around um, the transportation and uh, we'll come back again to all these questions. In terms of the upcoming webinars, so next week there is a change to the time of next week web webinar. Um, so all the other webinars up to now have been at 10 a.m. Next week's webinar is at 11 a.m. Uh, Irish Standard Time, so a little bit later than uh, the other ones have been. It will talk about the orientation and registration process. OK, um, it will be delivered by student support and development, and they will talk to you all about the process. Again, you can find the recordings of all the previous webinars. Um, and again, I can make the this um, PowerPoint available. Uh, I'll be sending out the recording of, of this one afterwards, so you'll be able to see that. And if you want the slides, you can just respond to, to the email to let me know, and I will be happy to send um, the, the slides your way. Um, just to, to highlight again, I suppose, around the, uh, we, we do try to put a lot of information up on our social media channels and you will see more and more things go up um, as we get closer to the start date. As we've mentioned previously, Irish students still don't know where they are going to university at this point, okay? Irish students don't get their offers for university until early September. So a lot of the, I suppose, the, the new student information isn't going to go up until then, um, but you will see an increasing amount of it go up over the next kind of few weeks. So definitely keep an eye on both the DCU International social media and also the main DCU accounts. Um, and again, in terms of any specific questions that you have, you can um, send them to uh, international.office at dcu.ie. Okay, 